Hello, it is time for yet another video about the Fourier transform in epicycles. Now, you might be asking yourself, what? Why? I mean, what's wrong with you? What's this weird, unhealthy obsession you have with the Fourier transform? That's a good question. I'm not so sure, actually, but I do know that there is absolutely at least, if not more, one thing that I feel is very important to demonstrate to you as part of this series, this now three-part coding challenge about drawing a path with the epicycle, epicycles, and the discrete Fourier transform algorithm. All right, so what I want you to look at here from the previous coding challenge is this. This is the coding train train logo being drawn by two sets of nested orbits and the frequencies, amplitudes, and phases of these orbits are all calculated from the discrete Fourier transform algorithm. The discrete Fourier transform algorithm <laughs> takes, it's over here, and this is gonna look like, what, are you crazy? I'm not gonna watch the rest of this video, but just stay with me, or don't stay with me, but stay with me if you, if you feel so inclined. Don't worry if this looks crazy and weird to you. I'm gonna help you through it. The, I, and, and actually, I did this already, if you, and you might wanna stop and go back and watch that first video, but what the discrete Fourier transform does is it takes any signal, and that signal is sort of represented here by x sub n signal. And you can think of the signal as really just a list of numbers. 1, 5, 10, negative 3, 7, 9, 4, right? It's just a list of numbers. That signal, these could be the x values of a path. They could be the y values of a path. They could be the, um, the values of a, of a sound wave. Um, there's so many types of things that this could be. And it takes this signal and breaks it down into a collection of wave patterns. Each wave pattern has a particular frequency. Frequency meaning how many cycles does it repeat within one unit of time. So how many repeats per second you might think. 60 hertz is 60 cycles per second. It also uh, um, breaks it down into, so there's different frequencies but there's also different amplitudes and different phases. So is this wave pattern like actually a little bit offset one way or the other? Is it, is it much taller? Is it much shorter? It breaks it down and I can visualize those wave patterns as rotating circles. Okay, so there's, that's a lot. That's a lot there. Uh, I'm sure you have questions. Maybe, hopefully, some of this stuff is covered in a bit more depth in my previous two videos. Or, of course, in the supplementary material about the Fourier transform that I'm including as links in this video description. I've talked about those way too much, but in particular, I'll highlight the three blue, one brown video about the Fourier transform that you might want to check out, which goes into this in more depth. Now, so here, I have two sets of signals. I have X's, oh no, this is Y's actually, I have Y's, and over there I have X's. I treat them separately, I apply the Fourier transform to each, and then I render out these rotating circles and get this path. What I want to do now is treat the signal, the signal is not one, a, 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 a list, a vector, an array of numbers, it is an array of pairs of numbers. So we could think of the signal as, you know, x of a path, x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3. And this is a really useful way of thinking about it because so much in computer graphics is this. Vector graphics, scalable vector graphics, SVGs, those are really just defined paths, collections of points. Now we can do all sorts of crazy math if these points actually mean like draw a Bezier curve between them, but I'm gonna do this in the simplest way, and this is just, you know, if I had, this was my path, I would have three points, x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3, and I would wanna create three orbiting circles to, uh, to be able to render out this path. That's what I want to do. So how do, what happens when the pairs of numbers go into this formula? Well, guess what? If you watched my first video, I talked a bit how, about how this is actually something known as a complex number. A complex number is a number that has two components. A real component, a real number being the numbers we're kind of familiar with more often, <laughs> and a quote unquote imaginary number. Now the fact that it's called imaginary is unfortunate naming, it's somewhat misleading, but the idea is that it is 
a real number paired with the number i. And the number i is the solution to the problem i squared equals negative 1. So this is often referred to as an imaginary number because it's kind of like, what? The square root of negative 1? You can't square something and have negative 1. But yet, you can. There is a solution to this. We can, that's a, a, a topic for a, a Khan Academy video, a math video. But if I can treat any one of these points as a complex number, x plus, so x1 plus y1 i, then, and that's actually what I was doing before. I just was leaving out the imaginary component. I just had a whole bunch of x's and a whole bunch of y's uh, always in the real component. So if I can actually have this signal be in a list of complex numbers, I could have this be complex numbers, this is already a complex number, then I just need to know how do I multiply two complex numbers together. You got, you got that, sort of, maybe? Let's, let's go write some code. I'm gonna go write some code because there's more to do over here, but I think you th we need to take a moment to breathe and absorb that a little bit and write some code. All right, so if we go back to the code where I left it off from this previous iteration, uh, which I have right here, I had a particular JavaScript file, Fourier.js, where I had my implementation of the discrete Fourier transform algorithm, DFTX. X being exactly that X sub N over there, the array of the, the signal, the array of numbers, and then big X being uh, this, the array of complex numbers that came out that I get the um, phases, frequencies, and amplitudes, okay? So what I want is to rewrite this so that little x is actually an array of complex numbers. And I think one way that I could do this is to actually put here, I'm gonna write a complex number class. Now, if you're paying attention or if you've used P5 before, you might be thinking to yourself, oh, just use P5.vector. Because actually, I'm just gonna swing on here over to the Wikipedia page about complex numbers, look at this. This is how you represent a complex number. It is a vector in the complex plane, where the, what we think of as the y-axis is the imaginary axis, what we think of as the x-axis is the real axis. And right here it says, a complex number can visually be visually represented as a pair of numbers, a, b, forming a vector on a diagram called the, I never knew this, Argand diagram. Ooh, look at that. More stuff. Um, so I could just use the fact that P5 has a vector class, but I, I kind of want to take the time to really think this through. Um, and I need to do complex number multiplication, which is different than just like a vector dot product, perhaps. <laughs> so um, it's similar. But anyway, um, so just let me do it myself. So I'm going to write a constructor. Um, I don't know what I should call these A and B. Maybe, um, so one way to do is like a, a, is A plus B I. I think, though, I might stick with the real and imaginary. So let's say um, real and imaginary, but I'll leave these a and b. So this is my complex number. So this is what I wanted to do first. So I just have a complex number, and if I go back to the main sketch, at, instead of having two separate x and y variables, I'm going to get rid of this. Let's get rid of y everywhere in this code. In a weird sort of way, I'm kind of simplifying things. Let's get rid of y everywhere. Well, I'm not going to worry about this right now. I'll come back to this in a little bit. Let's comment that out. And let's, so what I had before, you know, again, you probably want to watch the previous video, is I have this uh, big uh, file that just has a ton of x, y points for the path of the drawing. And I separated them into separate x and y's. And now what I'm actually going to do is say, um, constant c equals a new complex number with the real component as the x and the imaginary component as the y, and then I'm going to push that into x. So that array is now an array of complex numbers with the x and y's. And in fact, then I want to go here and say, like, you know what? I don't want, I don't need to treat these as separate real and imaginary components. I have this idea. I'm going to call it like the sum as a new complex number with 0, 0. Then the idea is I could say sum.real plus equal, sum.imaginary plus equal, right? I'm going to treat this as a complex number object 
with two components. The problem is this is no longer correct. So I need to, I mean, everything is right, but this no longer flies. This asterisk is multiplication. Cosine of phi is a floating point number. It's like a complex number with no imaginary component. X, previously, X index N was just a single number. So uh, I need to rethink how these uh, because this is now a complex number. How do I multiply a complex number with another complex number? Um, I have to completely rethink this. So the next step is for us to work out uh, complex number multiplication. So typically, you know, if I'm going to, um, if I'm going to uh, uh, want to implement complex number multiplication in my source code, I could actually just look up the formula for it and put it in the code, but I don't know. I got a lecture time today. Uh, I started early today. Let's actually do it here. So if I have two complex numbers, let's say I have a plus bi, and I want to multiply that, and often reference, this is referenced as the dot product. This is exactly what I have here, by the way. I want to multiply that by, let's call that uh, c plus di. Then how do I do that? Well, guess what? What's this multiplication property called? Commutative? <laughs> Record scratch sound. Uh, a commutative is uh, the property of multiplication or addition where I could do these in either order and I would get the same result. The distributive property is the one that I'm looking for where I can say A times, well this, A is going to distribute, multiply times C plus this. So I'm going to say A times C plus A D I, right? A times C plus A times DI plus BI times C, which is I could write as BCI plus, well, this is crazy, this is the fun part, plus BI times DI, which is BDI squared. Hey, guess what? Remember how I wrote up on the board over here, I squared equals negative one? By the way, somebody pointed out that the traditional way you might see this written is like, i is the solution to x squared plus 1 equals 0. You can see that's the same thing. x squared equals negative 1. Or you can also think of it as the square root of negative 1, although somebody, a YouTube comment I had earlier said, that's not a good, good way to describe it, but whatever. Uh, this is negative 1. So guess what? This becomes negative 1, which means this is just a minus. And now a complex number is real and imaginary components. What's the real component? The real component is a, c, minus b, d. And the imaginary component, also I could pop out that distributive property again, is a, whoops, ah. a, d, plus, sorry, plus b, c, i. So this is the real component, and this is the imaginary component. We have just done I don't know what, what is, I just can't believe this uh, coding train first complex number mathematics. Now the, the truth of the matter is um, I could probably spend a, a whole video, many videos, building out an entire complex number class, but I'm just going to stick to what we need, which basically is just the multiplication. All right, just in case, just to be sure, I quickly Googled how do you multiply complex numbers and the same notation is here and the same answer, dare I say, is there. And then I was also reminded also by the chat um, that there is a, an acronym, FOIL, for a way of remembering this. First, outer, inner, last. <laughs> I looked it up, I figured it out. First is you first multiply A and C together. Then you multiply the outer, which is A and D, right? Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. First, first, outer, inner, last. First, outer, inner last. We've got a new coding train song called Foil, Foil, Foil. All right, it's time now. What we can do is take this result that we've got here and add it to the complex number class as a multiplication function. So let's imagine I am saying I have a complex number dot multiply another complex number, which I'll call C. And so one, the one complex number is this and the other complex number is C. So I need to make the, uh, the real component is uh, this real component times, I'm looking over there on the whiteboard at this formula, 
times uh, C is the other's real component minus this real component, no, no, yes, no, 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 this imaginary component, because it's written as B over there, uh, times the uh, others, uh, D is its imaginary component. Okay, and then the imaginary component is this real component times the others imaginary component plus this imaginary component times the others Let's see, C, C, C is the other's real component. Let's take a moment to meditate on that and wait for the chat to tell me I did it wrong. <laughs> and then I'm gonna say return a new complex number with this real component and this imaginary component. Okay, so now I should be able to say um, sum dot add x index n. Oh, I need a new complex number. Okay, so I also need, now I need to make a complex number. Um, I'll call it uh, c <laughs> for what? I need to make a complex number that is cosine of this and negative sine of this. Okay, so this is the, this is I did this before, but I just never bothered to separate it out. So my, my complex number is a new complex number with cosine of phi and negative sine of phi. That's the complex number. And then the, uh, I, if I take, uh, sorry, x sum dot add x sub n dot, uh, dot multiply c. So I want to add up this complex number multiplied with c added up to the sum. What does that mean? I need an add function. Uh, and so if I go back to the Fourier, of the Fourier class up here, I can write an add function, which also takes a complex number, and I just add the real components together and the uh, imaginary components together. Um, like this. Now I've done something sort of terrible here where the add function adds to <laughs> this particular <laughs> complex number rather than returning a new one and the multiply function returns a new one and uh, that's, that's definitely an opportunity for um, refactoring this later. But um, I'm going to just leave that for now. This is not good object-oriented programming design. Maybe I want one to be static, but I'm going to leave that as is. Whew. Okay. Then I can say sum, and I'm just going to do this. Let's just, let's just leave this. I could write a divide function, but I'm just going to leave this as this. And I think, dare I say, this is now done. This is now the version, um, and somebody in the chat is telling me I've made a mistake, so hold that thought. This, this, is that, this is the version of this algorithm where this array is no longer just an array of floating point numbers, but is an array of complex numbers. Ah, yes, this is C. I was saying other in my head, oops, but it is C. Thank you. So let's just see, uh, dare I say, uh, let's just console log Fourier x and see what I get. RE is not defined, Fourier line 33. I'm sure I forgot, oh boy, oh boy, I forgot <laughs> that now all of this is in an object. Again, I could, I could put in, I should put in the complex number class a magnitude function and an angle function, but I'll just do it this way. And then I have to say this. I'm just gonna, uh, this really should be refactored, but I will leave it like this just to see if it works. Uh, great, so here we go and we can see what does it look like. I have a real component. I have a frequency, I have a phase, I have a real, where's the imaginary component, huh? <laughs> okay, let's go back. Ah, imaginary component. Let's try that again. I have, in each one of these, a real component, an imaginary, you well, can't see this. A real component, an imaginary component, a frequency, a phase, and an amplitude. Those are all the things I need. Now, we're not gonna know if this worked till I try to draw it. All these numbers, they're there. There's no, not a number, but I'm just gonna hope. There's a lot more code for me to write before I can actually run it. 
<laughs> so that, this timpani sound is a premature. All right, so a couple things. One is it, it's complaining to me uh, that there's some leftover Fourier Y in sketch line 58. Oh, okay, well that's just the length. I only have Fourier X now. Whoops, ah! No errors. <laughs> this is a long timpani sound. So I just need to do the epicycles. This is stuff I wrote in the previous coding challenge. It's calculating all the epicycles based on a particular Fourier series that was calculated from the Fourier transform. I don't need v separate Vx and Vy. Um, so, and I can just, basically, this is actually simpler now. I don't need these lines. And what I should be able to do is there. It should actually just be this. Ironically, it's a lot simpler, right? Because all I need to do is get all the epicycles. The epicycles return this function epicycles, which I never liked that I capitalized the C. So let's fix that. This epicycles function basically goes through and calculates all the x, y positions of the circles and angles. It was done before, but the same function should stand. And now, Thank you, thank you, thank you. This coding challenge is now done. Look at that. Woo. All right, so that is the Fourier transform. Now, okay, quickly, quickly, quickly. Let's not go just yet. I, I really vastly prefer the version where the user has to draw their own thing. This is um, another version of the coding challenge that I made where the user just draws something. And very quickly, let me bring in my new discrete Fourier transform algorithm to this one, um, just so we can see this at play. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to Fourier.js. I'm going to paste it into here. And so I now have the new algorithm there. Then I'm going to go into sketch.js. And the drawing is, so again, I don't have x's and y's, just, just the x's. And the x is, a new complex number with, draw, with the x and y of the drawing as a component. Just want to see how quickly I can get this to work. Then I'm sorting it. Uh, and then all of this is the same. And then here, this is just creating the drawing offset by the middle of the screen. And then uh, put that offset in here. Same sort of thing. I can just... Uh, change this. I don't like that that function had the capital C in it, so I must fix that as well. A little refactoring now instead of later. Uh, I can get rid of these lines, and here we go. And now, uh, 26. I'm missing a parentheses. Ah, need another parentheses here. And now, all right, let's see. I'm going to draw a little cat. This is going to be really sad when this doesn't work. It has to be a continuous path. It'd be interesting to try to do this without like a continuous path. Ah! Oh! You can see it did it! It calculated it, but... I need a better sound than that trombone thing. It's a little cheesy. I mean, all of this is cheesy. 4AY is not defined. Uh, I better not do an elaborate drawing next time <laughs> before I... So let's just we'll do it really quick. Okay, now it works. Okay. But do my cat now. So now this really is the end of the coding challenge. There it is, 4A transform of a complex number series into uh, orbiting epicycles, drawing this beautiful meow, 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 meow. You don't have a cat sound, it's a cat. Thank you very much for watching. If you make something from this, please share it with me. One thing you might try is go look at that quick draw data set from one of some of my previous coding challenges or maybe the sketch RNN uh, machine learning model. 
you, that, those would be interesting things to combine with this, right? I think there's some interesting possibilities there. Okay? Mwah, mwah, mwah. See you soon.